So today I thought we'd do a little bit of gaming, but not on this keyboard, and not on this keyboard. Matter of fact, we're not going to be using a proper keyboard or controller at all. Instead, we're going to be using a numpad. That's right, Glorious was kind enough to send over their GMMK numpad for us to take a look at today, and given this is sort of an unorthodox product from Glorious, I figured we'd use it in an unorthodox method, so let's dive right in. Alright, so as I game today, I will be talking about GMMK Pro. Our game du jour is Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, and as you can see right here, my cursed hands are set up to use the GMMK numpad as my gaming tool. Alright, so first let's talk target audience for this thing. Um, it's supposed to be targeted at owners of GMMK2 65% as well as owners of GMMK Pro, but in a little bit we'll talk about why that doesn't necessarily add up for me. Now while it does mirror the visuals of both the GMMK2 and the GMMK Pro, it does so in kind of an awkward way. It shares the rounded corners of the GMMK2, but has the same kind of side profile and lighting configuration as the GMMK Pro. It also sits a fair bit taller than the GMMK2, but also sits ever so slightly lower than the GMMK Pro, so it's not a one-for-one -one match for either. That said, it is really well constructed. It's all aluminum, including the stock plate that you get, which is color match based on the color you get. They have uh, black or, I'm sorry, I'm calling it silver. Y you did it with GMMK Pro. You're doing it here too. This is not white, it's silver. But one thing I will say about the plate here is that they learned from the mistakes they made on the GMMK Pro and made the plate more compatible with a broad range of stabilizers. So you don't have the same kind of restrictions that you have with GMMK2 or the first run of GMMK Pros where plate fitment restricted you to 6.25 millimeter wide stabilizer housings. Now down in the bottom right corner is a design cue that's unique to the numpad. It's this little polished PBD Glorious logo. You can purchase a separate blank plate for this if you don't want the GMMK logo here, but as just a stock add-on, I admittedly would have liked to have seen just a die sub orange version of the Glorious logo, kind of like the cap that they provide with their GMMK keyboards. Now while the rest of the layout of the keyboard is a standard 17 key numpad area, the two things that make it unique are also the two things that make it sort of confusing for me. And that's the addition of a rotary knob and a slider. Now out of the box, the rotary knob is assigned to control your master volume levels, while the slider is supposed to be uh, able to be set for individual volume channels. Unfortunately, on my version of Glorious Core, I can't get that working for whatever reason, so unfortunately I wasn't really able to play around with that very much. On top of all of this, not only is the plate gasket mount like the GMMK Pro is, but it also has Bluetooth functionality, which is, again, unique to the rest of the Glorious product line. The advertised battery life for this, I believe, is around 74 to 76 hours. I could sort of see you getting that if you don't have the LEDs on at all, and you don't use it like you're typing 160 words a minute. The problem really does come in when you start using LEDs, especially white LEDs, because remember, on an RGB diode, there are three separate red, green, and blue sections. When you fully saturate all of those in intensity, that's what gives you white lighting. And when you do that in wireless mode, you're getting maybe 14 and a half hours of battery life. It's not great. If you're going maximum intensity white lighting, you will need to turn down the brightness or have it plugged in. Now that said, in my idle testing with the LEDs off, yeah, you probably will be able to get at least a full week's charge out of the GMMK numpad if you're just using it with LEDs off like a numpad. What's nice about that too is it does give you compatibility with Apple, Android, and Windows devices, so it at least gives you a little bit more versatility on that front as well if you plan on using this as sort of an on-the-go productivity tool. Now the stabilizers this comes standard with are the GSV2, so I finally get a chance to take a look at them. They are... Whelming? At the very least, they've done a better job of not just over lubing the snot out of them when they deliver them to you. They're much easier to clean off and relube yourself if you want to. If anything, I would say they almost went slightly too light on the lube, as my zero key and my enter key did exhibit a little bit of ticking out of the box. That said, thankfully, because of the revisions they made to the plate, I was just able to swap in some cherry clip and stabilizers and call it a day. However, I will be taking a closer look at the GSV2s I do have in because I did 
did notice that when using the Taihao Cubic test keycap, there was some binding on the zero. It was actually a common thing among every single Cubic set that I had, so I definitely need to investigate that a little bit more. I'm wondering if there is a tolerance issue with the wires on the GSV2 stabilizers, because these, unlike the ones you buy as an aftermarket option, do not have the gold-plated wires. Also standard with the numpad are those glorious Fox switches we did some coverage over not too long ago when we reviewed the GMMK2. This is a perfectly acceptable stock linear switch for the vast majority of users out there, and I really can't see many of you needing to do anything other than just plugging them in and enjoying them. That said, we did also test with our JWIC black switches, as you do. Probably the most disappointing and unfortunately controversial thing about this whole experience for me is the PCB and the way they address compatibility concerns. Out of the box, you get a standard five pin hot swap north facing PCB. The problem with this is that if you're trying to market this to GMMK Pro owners, they're not going to be able to use their Cherry Profile caps with this without interference, as we will observe in the typing test in which I use Novel Key's Cherry Purple and Blue on White Key caps. Their solution to this is to provide a separate PCB. At a $20 pre-order price and what appears to be a $45 in stock price? That feels sort of like an avoidable luxury tax, and I do have some ideas on how they could probably better implement something like this once the product goes live, but... Maybe not. That said, owners of keyboards like the GMMK2 that prioritize north-facing LEDs for the sake of having better illuminated legends will be pleased to find this. And if you have a GMMK2, this uses the same double-shot ABS shine-through caps as that keyboard. So out of the box, you're going to be matched and good to go there. But as a GMMK2 owner, can you really justify spending $20 more than your whole keyboard on just the numpad? And of course, as for acoustic accoutrements, this does have some plate foam and some case foam. Sounds and feels basically exactly like the GMMK Pro does at stock. Now, obviously, this is an excessively silly use for a numpad, and I can't imagine most of you will be gaming on it quite like this. However, in talking to some more folks in the community, it turns out OSU players tend to prioritize using numpads for their gaming experience there, so maybe this isn't so far out of the realm of possibility. You also have to consider, if you're gaming on a numpad, this is functionally an ortholinear layout, which means all of the keys are going to be equidistant from one another. And especially the broader keys may give some folks a bit easier time reaching critical functions in the games that you play. While I can say that this definitely won't be a mainstay experience for me, I can definitely see where you might want to use a numpad for something like this. And the key remapping functionality on that end gives you the opportunity to do that. But in order to get to a conclusion on numpad, you have to take this into consideration as it pertains to not only the greater market, but also within Glorious's own product stack. And this is where some of it gets sort of a little muddy for me. Let's start with the pricing. 
$130 out the door. Now, the thing with that, given their internal targets for this product, you're either looking at GMMK2 owners who, if they're buying GMMK2, especially as a pre-built solution, they're looking for specific things. One, they're looking for pre-lube switches. Two, they're looking for a largely plug-and-play experience now that they can modify later if they want to. And if it's me with my money being spent and I have those kinds of considerations to make, I'm probably gonna be looking at a down market solution for a numpad to give me that kind of functionality rather than looking at something like GMMK numpad. If I bought a GMMK Pro bare bones, Let's assume for the moment that I want to take advantage of the south-facing switches to put Cherry Profile keycaps on this keyboard, okay? Cool. I bought some of the in-stock Cherry keycaps that GM that the glorious <laughs> sells. If I then go and buy the numpad, not only do I have a set of keycaps that I'm now no longer going to be using because they don't currently sell the numpad as a bare-bones solution, but I now also have to buy a whole nother PCB just to use the matched cherry keycaps that I want to use without having any noise interference. And as you just heard in the typing test, there is definitely a strangeness to the sound of cherry profile keycaps on most of the numpad. And again, that has entirely to do with interference with the top housing. Eh. Not bad considering I was talking most of that time. I've definitely got some thoughts about the GMMK numpad here. First of all, if you're concerned about the sort of cash-grabbing nature of a lot of the add-ons here, strictly speaking, they are add-ons. They are optional. You do not need to buy them. Personally, that's the way I would approach GMMK numpad, is just buying it as a plug-and-play option that's going to be minimally modified. Especially right now, given that the top case options don't entirely match all of the top case options that they have for GMMK Pro. So even if you did want to go the route of getting things all matchy-matchy, I would wait until they update the color options to fully reflect all of the same stuff they have available for GMMK Pro. The only thing that's a genuine miss for me there is that PCB. So let's go ahead and quit out of the game, and then we'll talk some of the ways I feel like Glorious could better approach certain aspects of the GMMK numpad. So let's talk about how we can refine the GMMK numpad experience. Now again, this is theory crafting. I understand that there are logistics and inventory issues associated with some of these recommendations. When I think of solutions for numpad here, I look to mode designs and their method of selling highly customizable keyboards. They basically let you pick at the product screen exactly what you want to be packaged with your product before it's shipped out. I get that Glorious deals in a large volume of products, so this is really the only way they can get around an issue like that, but forcing pro owners to spend more money on a PCB that is then in turn going to generate more e-waste because they're never going to use the north-facing PCB ever again, it just doesn't feel like a great solution. On top of that, if you were a GMMK Pro pre-built owner, where are your matching numpad caps? If I am mistaken and GMMK Pro pre-built kits do come with the numpad caps already, then you're set. But if they don't, that's kind of a big oversight on Glorious' part. And if it's me, I'm taking care of GMMK Pro pre-built customers. I am biting the bullet, eating the cost, and sending verified owners of GMMK Pro pre-built who buy GMMK numpad the matched set of numpad caps so they have at least the caps to match everything else. And as for the rest of the stuff, the different knobs and slider tops and top cases and plate materials, whatever, yes, it's a bit on the cash grabby side, but ultimately you can kind of ignore that and just stick with the base numpad as your experience. Ultimately, the other stuff is just giving you cosmetic upgrades anyway. But ultimately, rather than this being a product for existing glorious keyboard owners, maybe this is actually a product for folks that don't already own a glorious keyboard. There are several numpads available in and around the 80 to 100-ish dollar range, with GMMK numpad 
topping the range as being one of the most feature-rich, but not necessarily in the most practical of ways. Do we really need a gasket mount numpad? Do we really need a knob and a slider being marketed to a customer base that already has a keyboard with a knob on it that does the same thing? Probably not, but if I own another TKL or smaller keyboard from a different brand that doesn't have the knob or the slider on it, that doesn't give me the kind of customization in terms of programming that GMMK Numpad provides me, and I want it to be a wireless solution and don't necessarily care about having max brightness RGB LEDs on, suddenly this takes on a slightly different appeal. Now, if I were to go back to the drawing board and do this differently, I would probably have segmented the numpad into a similar class of products like they did with GMMK Pro and GMMK2. Have a downmarket version of it that utilizes an integrated plate, and instead of having the slider on the side of it, we get an extra row of three keys on the top of where your numlock and the rest of your math functions are up here, and add the rotary knob up there. Then have this version for the pro owners that gives you the additional row on the top and omits the knob but keeps the slider. In the end, we're left with sort of a confused product. It's trying to do a lot of things all at once, and by and large, it does many of those things really well and presents in a really clean, well-built package that provides a lot of flexibility and versatility. I just don't necessarily know if it makes more sense for glorious owners or non-glorious owners. But I don't know, what do you think? Sound off in the comments down below. How would you utilize a numpad that offers you features and functionality like this? And if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. You're the real goats. One more time, huge shout out and thank you to Glorious for sending over their GMMK numpad for us to take a look at ahead of launch. Remember, if any of this made any kind of sense to you at all, and you're interested in going in on the pre-order, I will have links for all of that down in the video's description. Also, on your way out, toss us a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Make sure you get subscribed and notified so you don't miss any of our content when it goes live. And if you're interested in supporting the caliber and quantity of the content we make here on The Manic Geek, stop by our coffee and buy us a coffee. Every little bit helps. And we will catch you all in the next one.